Ready? Ready. Yeah. Begins, because of quiet in the room. Begins All right. with Sana uh, Akur's All right. fierce pool attack. And I'm, Welcome. I'm great soon, you know, <laughs> to raise uh, in the support of Marx. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, if I yes, can, if I can. yes. yes. Go. That's your charge. All right, everyone. Uh, I've done that all my life. Welcome to Cooperism 513. I, in this political moment, I'm going to start with Samuel Beckett and his novel from 1953, The Unnameable. You must go on. I can't go on. I will go on. So it's my great privilege today to welcome back Etienne Balibar to Columbia University and to the 1313 seminar series to discuss Marx on cooperation. Or to be more clear, as I will explain in a moment, to explore Marx's writings on cooperation and worker cooperatives, to discuss Marx with regard to practices that we are calling cooperation in this seminar, or a regime that we're calling cooperism. I couldn't think of anyone better uh, to be in dialogue uh, than with Etienne Balibar, who has been thinking and writing on these questions since he was a student of Louis Althusser at the famous seminar at the École Normale Supérieure in the early 1960s that led to the, to the publication of the collective work, Reading Cap Capital. That's history, my dear. Indeed, indeed. 60-year-old history with uh, Althusser, Pierre Macheret, Roger Establet, and Jacques Rancière, published back in 1965. And, Since that time. And others hiding. And behind. others hiding behind. Yeah, yes. yes, many others. Since that time, uh, Etienne Balibar has distinguished himself as one of the foremost thinkers on Marx, publishing landmark contributions such as The Philosophy of Marx in 1993, On the Dictatorship of the Proletariat, 1976, and other books and essays, such as the one that we posted on our website uh, this week, uh, The Expropriators Are Expropriated, and will, that will form in part the basis of our conversation tonight. Uh, in conversation with Marx and going beyond him as well, writing on Spinoza, Locke, writing with Emmanuel Wallerstein and others, Etienne Balibar has forged new philosophies of emancipation, of equal liberty, um, has written on citizenship, on violence, on revolution. A great friend of the 1313 series, an annual contributor, it's with deep friendship and admiration that we welcome back Etienne. And so uh, before we start our conversation, before I actually frame the discussion with a few opening remarks, I think we can all extend to Etienne Balibar a warm welcome. And with that, I'd also like to thank uh, a number of people who've made this evening possible and Etienne's visit to uh, Colombia that includes everyone here at the Maison Francaise, uh, Shani Peer and Fanny Gix, um, everyone at ICLS, uh, including Anapama Rao, of course, and uh, Madeleine Dalby in the French department, and Kiana Tagavi at the Columbia Center for Contemporary Critical Thought. All right, so let me then start by framing our discussion this evening and then asking Etienne to intervene. So this seminar, Cooperism 1313, has been exploring forms of solidaristic cooperation with, as an exemplar, uh, worker cooperatives. We've been studying the promise and the potential of people coming together uh, through forms of self-governance, of autogestion, of democratic self-determination, uh, and equal voice to sustain themselves and the environment. Now, um, I'm going to call these solidaristic cooperation or cooperatives and not simply cooperation as I do in my book because of the way in which Marx uses the term cooperation somewhat differently than we are in this course and in this seminar. 
as Marx explains in chapter 13 of uh, Capital Volume 1, he's using the term at a higher level of generality to refer to all collaboration between, in, in effect, working together with other people, whether it's a capitalist or collectivist, right? He's, he's referring to cooperation, uh, co-operation, with a reference to uh, Destut de Tracy's notion of concours des forces, which is basically competition, which is basically people working together and possibly competing with each other in a way through because of, as he talks of, animal spirits. So he uses the term in a much broader way than we are, because when I'm using the term, I'm using it in a kind of solidaristic forms of cooperation. So cooperative, cooperatives forms of uh, co uh, of, of, of cooperation. I'll be try to be careful not to confuse the terms, so I may use cooperatives more um, than cooperation. Now, uh, while the worker cooperatives are probably the lodestar of what we're interested, we also have been looking at large social movements like the landless workers movement in Brazil, uh, we did that last week, or the ZAD in Notre Dame des Landes. Taking the worker cooperative as a lodestar, it's fair to say that since Marx's time and to the present, there's been a tension, uh, a conflict between, on the one hand, Marxian ideas of history, on the one hand, and the political experimentation with cooperative efforts, on the other hand. Or maybe to be even more clear, between uh, Marxian theories of class struggle, on the one hand, and worker cooperatives on the other. So still today, experiments in worker cooperatives, such as the now famous Mondragon Cooperative Consortium in the Basque country in Spain, which is the seventh largest industrial um, um, enterprise in, uh, in Spain. The Mondragon Cooperative is attacked, as it were, from both sides. Right. Of course, it's attacked from the right, uh, from the free enterprise right as being less efficient, less nimble, supposedly, than capitalized corporations. But it's also attacked on the left as, in a way, undermining class, conf class struggle. And the critique, essentially, is that members of worker cooperatives become some petty bourgeois, uh, and invested in forms of collective private property. Now I'm being crude, but I'm trying to get at the essence of the critique here. You hear it well, for instance, in uh, Sharon Kazmir's uh, ethnography of the Mondragon, uh, of the Mondragon cooperatives. Uh, it's called The Myth of Mondragon, Cooperatives, Politics and Working Class Life in a Basque Town, where you get a clear sense, for instance, that um, what she, is arguing for, right, is uh, to look at things in ideological terms, uh, she writes, including imagining what it would be like if workers were active in larger political movements. And if in this age of flexible accumulation, she writes, we could build organizations that truly transferred power to workers and genuinely created more just workplaces, right? In other words, um, in other words, the Mondragon cooperatives do not truly transfer power to workers and do not genuinely create just workplaces. Uh, you hear it as well in the preface uh, that's written by um, uh, the late June Nash uh, when June writes that the very ideological stance of the cooperatives as harmoniously integrated worker manager teams mitigates the expression of antagonism based on structural opposition that persists in these settings. In other words, very clearly, um, these cooperatives may have uh, positive aspects to them, but they're undermining uh, the possibility of real class struggle. Now, from start to finish, Marx uh, in his work, raised similar questions about worker cooperatives um, and suggested that they have uh, conservative tendencies. In the Communist Manifesto, for instance, uh, as he's discussing uh, utopian socialists and not necessarily worker cooperatives, but nevertheless kind of progressive forms of socialist colonies or Icarias, et cetera, you know, he, he diminishes them 
um, talking about them as you know small experiments necessarily doomed to fail, um, efforts that are, in his words, castles in the air. Uh, and this continues in, in Capital Volume 3 in the text that we are going to be focusing on in part, and that Etienne focuses on in part in his text, uh, Chapter 27, um, which is uh, an unpublished uh, an unpublished piece that Engels puts in uh, Volume Three. There's this there's this striking passage where Marx writes: "The cooperative factories run by workers themselves are, within the old form, the first examples of the emergence of a new form, even though they naturally reproduce in all cases in their present organization all the defects of the existing system, and must reproduce them." Right. Um, and, and in a way, he puts capitalist joint stock companies and cooperative factories in the same space, in the same, in the same sentence, in the same space as, you know, what comes next, but as a step to, uh, on the step towards what is ultimately really desirable, uh, a form of Communism, And you find it as well all the way to the end in the critique of the Gotha program in 1875 uh, in those last writings when he's disparaging the Lasallian platform that included the establishment of cooperative societies. And he refers to um, the reactionary workers of the uh, Atelier, which was a particular uh, group of um, workshop workers. Um, and he talks and he writes about the proposal as proposal for cooperative societies as taking in general a retrograde step from the standpoint of a class movement to that of a sectarian movement. So there have been these critiques uh, all along. Uh, you can find them in the text, but then you can hear them later, even today. And the question that this raises is how worker cooperatives can be simultaneously a next step forward for capitalism, so a necessary step perhaps towards a Marxian idea of communism. And I think that there are these passages where it's pretty clear that it is a, an expected next step in the historical tendency. Um, but at the same time, how it can be inherently defective because it draws on the same logic of profit uh, as uh, capitalism does. And so it's this, this tension which can seem counterproductive, um, uh, particularly because if, if in fact worker cooperatives are a necessary step, it's hard to see how anyone would wanna be going in that direction intentionally if they are knowing that they're uh, stepping into kind of a form of uh, cooperative that is, uh, that is, you know, so, petty bourgeois basically um and uh and so and so this is in a way the the challenge that i'd like us to address today uh in this seminar and we've been going back and forth uh Etienne and i uh, in preparing this seminar so that's the that is the challenge if there's a way to frame it right it would be in this question which would be something like how can one negotiate in marx's work the place of worker cooperatives as both a next stage of economic development and yet as defective because born from the womb of capitalism. Um, now, uh, one, let me just add one other element to the conversation. Uh, and that has to do with the film from last night that we screened. Many of you were there, some of you weren't. And so I just wanted to say one word about it in case it comes into the, into the conversation uh, this evening. Uh, so as you know, the film, and, uh, and we recorded the talk back and the introduction by Etienne. So that's gonna be on the website for anyone who uh, was not able to be here. The film documented the worker movement at the Leap Watch and Clock Factory in Besançon, France, starting, well, starting with the strike in 1973. Uh, it was at a period when the factory was uh, going to undergo new management, restructuring, and layoffs. And what ensued in the film, and what we talked about, and what was so punctual for this conversation, was a remarkable constellation of different forms of worker 
cooperation, of worker solidaristic cooperation, a constellation, just a collection of, and we had on the screen and at various moments, just a number of different ways in which the workers were um, organizing, okay? There was the traditional kind of syndicalist or union kind of top-down structured organizing uh, by different unions, each of which had their own ethos, right? There was the CGT, which was the communist-led union, the CFDT, which was the secular Christian union with their own ethos, but also their own hierarchies and ways in which they wanted to proceed. You had auto-gestion approaches, so self-determining approaches that emphasized more of the collective decision-making, the decisions of, of all of the workers in assembly, right? Not simply electing, but all of them speaking, being there and responding. You had third, these more rogue militant actions uh, like occupying the factory or taking the managers hostage or taking the inventory of watches, 60,000 watches hostage, right? You had elements of a worker cooperative as well, uh, so there was that fourth element of a worker cooperative when the workers try to get the factory back to work, resuming certain functions of the factory, not all, but certain, mostly assembling the existing watch parts into watches and selling them. And in this fourth part, you had functionally the, the aspects of a worker cooperative that are important, right? And with the famous slogan, on fabrique, on vend, on se paye, we make it we sell it and we pay ourselves, right? You had something that was uh, something about operating and paying themselves as autonomous salaries and they, they were successful for several months. You had fifth elements of traditional cap class conflict and you could hear it well in the uh, CGT, uh, C CFDT union leader, uh, Charles Piaget, who talks, who specifically kind of contested management telling them you have to think about us as humans not as profit um, you also heard it clearly in the director in the in the new manager's voice shall nushfander who recognized the intractability right uh, uh of class and class conflict and then of course you had six maybe a french socialist uh management style captured capturing something like a uh, uh, Michel Rocard, uh, who later became prime minister under Mitterrand, uh, also represented in a way by the new direction, which was a kind of paternalistic socialism that functioned within a set of class struggle rules, almost perpetuating the class struggle in a regular mode of management versus worker negotiations for the distribution. So the experience of the Leap Factory uh, was a labo laboratory, a mishmash, a bricolage, or a constellation of many different forms of worker organizing within which the cooperative was one among others. And so it was interesting in that particular context. And if we bring it up, it'll be in that context that we'll be looking at that example uh, to include in our conversation this evening. Okay. So um, the question then, let me rephrase, and then let me turn it over uh, to Etienne, right, is how to negotiate in Marx's work the place of worker cooperatives as both a next stage of economic development, yet as defective because born from the womb of capitalism. Uh, Etienne? Thank you, Bernard. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I asked your... Um, Benevolence, huh? oh, would you say that? Indulgence, yeah. Because um, these days I'm still suffering a very uh, unpleasant form of bronchitis. I can't get rid of it. <coughs> but, <coughs> so, periodically I, I, I start coughing and I can't stop it. You know? So it's uh, very unpleasant for the they can't stop it uh, quickly. So it's very unpleasant for the audience and it makes my voice uh, a little shaky. And it's uh, also very tiring, but that's, uh, we'll make it. Uh, okay, so apologies for that in advance. Um, second, um, just one quick uh, addition to what you said. Can you hear me? Is that okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. 
No, no, please, please leave it like that. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, I'll speak a little louder if you want, but I, I don't want to have this microphone in my place. So um, the um, uh, just a quick uh, uh, additional remark on LEAP. Uh, it was, of course, uh, uh, our joint, uh, our common suggestion to have this movie shown yesterday. And we both agree that uh, one, uh, the events themselves, uh, second, uh, uh, the movie uh, made uh, years later um, are quite extraordinary. And they have uh, no doubt uh, an intrinsic uh, uh, relationship uh, to uh, what we are discussing in the seminar and what we're going to discuss today. Um, to me, I would say um, this, of course, um, it's our national history of the last decades, 68 and its aftermath, uh, the conflicts, the tensions, and moments of uh, uh, reconciliation, if you like, or solidarity, the term is very important, uh, between the different tendencies, wings of the French labor movement, organized labor movement in the broad sense. Um, I find this very interesting because, let's try not to spend hours on that, but a few months ago, we had in France uh, a very large uh, social movement protest against uh, an attempted uh, reform, uh, neoliberal in its spirit and in its content, uh, attempted reform of the system of pensions, state pensions, les retraites. Yeah. And um, contrary to what almost everybody was uh, expecting in, 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 in France. On all sides, the dif these different tendencies, the CGT and the CFDT still exist in France, but have been nationally, uh, have become weaker than they used to be at the time. Managed to create an extremely, uh, powerful, solid uh, solidarity, uh, which, uh, which, which, which made a difference. And mm -hmm. so that's an impact. Mm -hmm. But in any case, uh, uh, the, what I want to add is, uh, is, a, different, uh, is a different thing. Um, whenever I look at this uh, film, which I have seen several times, and which strikes a very, I have to admit, deep chord uh, in, in my in my chest or heart. I can't help uh, the words that come inevitably to my mind. The word that comes to my mind is communism. It's, uh, so uh, I, I I said to myself, okay, what we see here, this is communism in action. Now the definition of communism, and we might return to that, uh, this word as Bernard perfectly explains in, in, his, uh, in his book, is for me now, of course, an absolutely indispensable uh, instrument of reflection and, and, and uh, elaboration uh, is, is, uh, is, is, is a word which, uh, which has uh, us fluctuating contradictory uh, meanings, a whole semantic history, tracing back very far, even before what you say in your, uh, in your, uh, in your book. But that's, uh, and so uh, there are many definitions of communism, but for the sake of uh, explaining my feeling, uh, which is very subjective, you might say, uh, the definition that I choose is the one that has been uh, provided some years ago and repeated several times in different uh, essays by my old uh, friend, uh, comrade, uh, adversary, uh, 
uh, etc. Jacques Rancière, the same one who was part of the uh, Reading Capital uh, group, and as some of you may know, one uh, violently clashed with the Althusserian uh, uh, inspiration uh, and uh, created an extraordinary uh, philosophical and critical work uh, of his own. But so in several texts, he proposes the following definition, communism means uh, or refers to a community of life uh, or, and therefore a form of life, which is also a community of struggle, right? a form of struggle. And this is what I believe to see uh, uh, in in this uh, uh, in this experience, beautifully shown by the movie, the the fusion, right? not without uh, uh, tensions. Uh, we completely agree on that, and problems. Uh, the problems are on both sides. Huh? They are not. Uh, and not only on the side of uh, how to win a struggle uh, in, in the capitalist world against uh, um, against the market and then the government, you know? also on the other side, you know? how to live, how to organize, reorganize, reinvent collectively <laughs> our lives in a completely different manner. And this, not in some future, not in some eschatological future, but in the present. And I will turn to that uh, at some point. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry for that. I hear. So next preliminary, uh, there are too many of them perhaps, but uh, next preliminary, uh, a seminar is a seminar is a seminar. Uh, it's not a lecture. So I'm not coming with a written text that I would uh, read to you. I'm coming with uh, uh, notes uh, indicating a series of points, which I believe uh, uh, following your uh, introductory remarks, it would be important to take into account, but I'll have to adapt to the time that I already wasted perhaps, and therefore be longer on some points and quicker on others. We'll, we'll see how that uh, runs. And finally, and third, <coughs> um, uh, Bernard posted on the uh, um, uh, website of the um, of the um, of the seminar precisely a written version of what he has just said, uh, more or less uh, identical, uh, except that speaking. Uh, Orally, uh, and uh, he doesn't dare repeating the formula that comes again and again in his uh, text, and which I gladly, of course, uh, uh, take up as a, as a provocation, as an interpolation, and in and, and a provocation. Marx was wrong. Huh? This is the uh, the uh, uh, idea that uh, Bernard wants to hammer in his uh, uh, reading of this text. Uh, it begins like it, where Marx went wrong, because he says, in my opinion, was <laughs> qualified, was to argue simultaneously, etc. And you have repeated that, of course. Huh? And then if you, if you continue Marx and the Marxists after him, huh? and, uh, and this comes again, Marx was wrong to disparage worker cooperatives the way he did. He was also wrong to treat them as mere means to an end, as a mere instrument toward communism, communism, especially if he believed that they were a necessary stage of progression, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I take it that, uh, that uh, Bernard wants me, and I like this game, of course, uh, uh, very much. And I think we could, we both enjoy it. I hope you'll enjoy it too, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, he he wants me to react to 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 jump uh, uh, to to stand, of course, in the defense of uh, old Karl, <laughs> and say something like, uh, "No, Marx was right; he was not wrong." Huh? 
or perhaps uh, the reason why you say, can say that Marx is wrong is you completely misunderstand what Marx uh, has written and in which uh, perspectives, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So to some extent, I will play that game, uh, meaning that I, not comp I don't completely agree with the way you present uh, uh, his, uh, his ideas and, and, and his text. I will insist on, on that, the textuality, uh, et cetera. But let's make things clear. I think that you raise an extremely uh, interesting and politically important problem. I, I completely agree with that. And uh, uh, I completely agree that there are big, huge problems in Marx uh, around the issue of uh, cooperation or the way and, and cooperatives. Uh, these are, you perfectly indicated that these are two uh, themes which uh, perhaps we need to uh, separate or articulate. And uh, my feeling, uh, my, uh, is that, and they certainly have to do, huh? with what you uh, uh, indicate as a, uh, a problem uh, relating the articulation of means and ends, uh, means and ends. Uh, except that I hope you will forgive me, but uh, uh, the idea that uh, it would be uh, wrong or impossible or uh, untenable to argue simultaneously, as you said, that a certain social form or institution, uh, uh, let's say an institution in the, in, the, in the broad sense of the term, could be at the same time, could represent at the same time a step uh, towards, uh, or an element of transition towards uh, 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 more or less a complete transformation of the social fabric in which we uh, live, uh, a different world as, uh, as, as the tradition uh, uh, says it, and uh, uh, nevertheless, or, or, or simulta uh, simul simultaneously, uh, not only deeply embedded in uh, uh, contemporary actual, um, uh, uh, social relation, but uh, stamped, determined, and uh, determined in its observable uh, 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 realization by the uh, uh, capitalist logic. Um, this is not something that uh, would bother Marx very much, you know, because for good or bad, Marx believed in the unity of opposites as the core of the dialectical uh, uh, um, uh, idea. Huh? So any understanding of a social process, uh, process of transformation huh? from his point of view, uh, his point of view is based, is, is bound not only to exhibit such contradictions or such uh, uh, unities of uh, 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 opposites, but uh, uh, it's uh, these uh, these contradictions or oppositions form the very uh, center or core of the <laughs> of the of the transformation itself or the possibility uh, of moving uh, uh, from from one society to 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 another. Now, of course, you are absolutely uh, legitimate uh, you, are, you have the absolute right to 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 retort to 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 reply that's a trick that's a verbal trick huh? uh, well, it's the usual verbal trick negation of the negation dialectical processes unities of opposites blah 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 the whole uh, hegelian or post hegelian and in fact uh, intrinsically marxian is uh, no doubt uh, uh, about that, that uh, rhetoric, huh? or to be a little nicer uh, uh, form of discourse, uh, uh, um, that uh, uh, by means of which huh? Marx uh, uh, believed to be able to uh, think of the uh, uh, present, I would say, or the social present, uh, not only not only in terms of uh, 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 conditions, I would say, uh, 
but also in terms of uh, uh, tendencies, uh, tendencies uh, uh, or uh, 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 permanent conflict between the old and the new, uh, to borrow, to, to use another. Uh, 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 and the whole question, of course, is uh, again, uh, whether this, uh, this, uh, this uh, is a useful, I would say, uh, uh, guiding uh, thread, especially for politics. For, for politics huh? or a, a, a speculative uh, a, a trick uh, again yeah. okay so uh, i will have to 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 return to that in in more uh, concrete terms and then the 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 uh, um, another point in your uh, presentation on which you did not uh, insist uh, you wanted to be shorter in what you just said but which is explicit in your in your uh, post and uh, remarkably presented, I believe in the pages of your uh, uh, great book to which you refer yourself, it's around page uh, 175, 76, has to do with the fact that uh, among the Marxists who took up the issue of cooperation and cooperatives, especially cooperatives. Uh, um, therefore, uh, confronting, I would say, um, other uh, uh, tendencies and sometimes experiments or uh, uh, concrete utopias, as you would say in other, I'm sure for you, Mondragon is a concrete utopia and uh, I agree with that. You know? uh, as you said in a previous, uh, you, we discussed in previous uh, 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 seminar. Um, one of them, perhaps not the one most of us or some of us would, uh, would expect on that side, uh, who seems to break with a certain orthodoxy, I would say, uh, and you, you, you say uh, decidedly uh, reverses uh, what seems to be the permanently uh, uh, the negative uh, attitude of Marxists with respect to cooperation is Lenin. Is Lenin in two famous articles on cooperation, famous now well-known articles, written in 1923. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm sure you, but well, as part of the discussion, huh? uh, I very much appreciate. I think you. Uh, this uh, reference of yours. Uh, um, if you allow me, I think it's too abstract, uh, uh, or it has to become more uh, 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 concrete historically, because you seem to uh, indicate, uh, uh, believe me, I'm not trying to uh, make it a caricature, you seem to, to, to suggest something like, uh, Wow, remarkable. At some point, uh, 1923, why not 20, why not? Uh, uh, so it couldn't be much later because he died the year after. But uh, uh, this guy, Lenin, uh, uh, came to realize that uh, uh, cooperatives could be seen from a different angle and, uh, and, uh, and the question of their function in a transition towards socialism ought to be uh, uh, re-evaluated. Uh, so what I want to, and I also hope to return to that, but what I want to uh, 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 insist on immediately, you know, is uh, I, I agree with you, this is remarkable. And this is a shift uh, which has theoretical, uh, uh, but this shift is taking place is the most dramatic or in one of the most dramatic and even tragic moments in the history of the Soviet uh, revolution. The attempt at uh, building or creating or uh, uh, sitting on, uh, on, on roads, something called uh, 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 socialism. And so it's even more remarkable, in my opinion, than what you say. Uh, the, <laughs> and I hope to return to that. The, 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 the reason why, 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 why Lenin uh, uh, is led to, 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 to writing this text is the fact that the revolution is collapsing. 
Uh, it's collapsing in this moment. Uh, and therefore, the, 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 the question is not only, uh, oh, why not uh, give a greater importance to uh, cooperatives? Uh, they, are, they are very good you know, for, the, for what we are trying to do. Uh, the question is how to rescue uh, the, cap, the, the, the socialist uh, uh, project, uh, which at, at this moment is, uh, is, 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 I repeat, is, <laughs> is collapsing. Uh, and then, as few other times in his life and political activity, and always this has been perfectly uh, described by uh, biographers and, and political uh, analysts in the most uh, contradictory manner, that is shifting brutally from one position to another, um, supporting something that then he will more or less uh, let fall or destroy. So, uh, but nevertheless, I would tend to say, excuse me for taking sides, uh, in a genuinely um, uh, revolutionary manner, communist manner, I would say, uh, his, uh, his move is to say, we don't know with the party, we no longer know how to rescue the, the revolution. But look at the workers. They are trying something on which, from which we should draw a, a, a lesson and that we could try and uh, generalize. And so in my opinion, <laughs> your reference is, um, and he was doing, in a sense, almost exactly the opposite uh, at the same time in a different direction, uh, particularly as Robert Linard, my old friend uh, and uh, comrade, uh, has uh, explained, he's not the only one, but in an extraordinary book called Lenin Taylor uh, et les paysans, Lenin Taylor, Taylorism and the peasants, he's, uh, he's also convinced that the only way to uh, um, to, 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 to save not the revolution, but the economy, uh, and therefore the life of the people uh, from uh, uh, collapsing is to introduce Taylorism in the uh, most, uh, in, the, in the, uh, the American way of uh, the organization of labor into uh, Russian factories uh, in order to increase the productivity. So Taylorism on one side and uh, cooperation on the other side, uh, uh, the tension is, is extremely uh, uh, strong. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not making, uh, 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 suggesting that Lenin converts to the absolute opposite of his, uh, but nevertheless, I find it quite uh, significant and remarkable and therefore uh, that he uh, uh, endorses this, mm -hmm. uh, this experiment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I uh, not only agree with you, but would like to push it even a little uh, further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, did I speak too much? Mm -hmm. I haven't. No. I barely started to explain what I did to today. Thank you. So please give me this. Uh... Okay, so um, um, following directly on uh, on what I just said, and. Uh, I will, I will try and say quickly why we don't read Marx the same way. Um, because you tend, uh, you'll defend yourself, you tend to read Marx as the uh, inventor, the creator of uh, a theory, a doctrine, that is more or less uh, unified, which can include contradictions, uh, but which, uh, which is stabilized, so to speak. And of course, uh, at the time when uh, I was working with Althusser and uh, for, uh, writing Reading Capital that you put it, uh, we believed in something like that, or better said, we believed that we could raise to a higher level of abstraction, so to speak, what had been the standard orthodoxy and orthodox uh, 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 
uh, understanding of Marx's uh, uh, theory in the long tradition of uh, socialist and communist parties. So something that runs through uh, Engels's uh, definition of historical materialism and illustration. And don't misunderstand me, Engels is no idiot, uh, far from. Um, and then uh, Stalin and then uh, 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 others. Uh, we just wanted to, very uh, arrogant uh, attitude, to, to, to do it in a better way with the help of some recent uh, uh, philosophical, uh, epistemological uh, tools, uh, structures, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and other te uh, tendencies or currents uh, in critical Marxism of that period uh, uh, did the same, although, of course, aiming at different conclusions. So I'm firmly convinced now, uh, and this is the core of this essay that you uh, generously accepted to re uh, to post uh, for today's uh, seminar, the expropriators are, are expropriated, uh, which which I, I uh, which is a, a sentence uh, uh, in 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 Marxist texts that I try and uh, interpret uh, from a kind of philological uh, or hermeneutical uh, uh, point of view. So what I uh, believe is that, um, of course, Marx wanted to be extremely systematic. He wanted to build a body of concepts, value, surplus value, uh, laws of, uh, of the accumulation of capital, and some that we will uh, perhaps uh, have the time to, 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 to mention here formal and real subsumption of labor or the labor process under the capitalist form, et cetera, et cetera. And that, uh, 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 of course, was linked to the idea that uh, um, a political orientation, not a program, that Marx devised very few programs, if any. Uh, he criticized the programs of others. Uh, the Gotha program, etc. <laughs> which a kind of kind of um, guide, uh, line of orientation in the political vicissitudes, I would say, of the time, and the and uh, and of course with the guiding idea that this would help the the working class, the proletariat. Perhaps we have to, have to return to the problematic equivalence of these of these two uh, names uh, to become in a sense what it ideally would be uh, he had been convinced of that ever since the uh, 1848 uh, 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 revolutions the um, um, guiding force or major force uh, uh, in the uh, historical uh, process. Uh, whether we still believe in that is another question. But he did believe in it, no doubt. So I agree that this uh, and Cooper and his uh, and his remarkable, remarkably sophisticated, uh, uh, conceptually uh, uh, articulated and uh, disquisition, I would say, of the of the category cooperation is is. Is is a clear uh, demonstration of that, <laughs> but as my master Derrida uh, taught me, you know, another master I had, um, the the create the, the 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 production of concepts is a practice of writing. And the practice of writing produces something that you had not anticipated. It produces dilemmas, it produces eporias, it produces dissemination in the, in the, in the, in the, in the concepts. So um, um, I 
became increasingly convinced that, uh, and I try to share this problem, uh, in a productive manner. It's not just becoming skeptic, not interested in being skeptic. Uh, increasingly convinced that uh, what is important remains important for us in Marx are not the doctrines uh, that he would have adopted and after which we can say either he's wrong or he's right. It's the problems that he's trying, uh, I, I can also use a Foucauldian terminology, he's trying to problematize certain issues. And so what's important are the, are the, are the problems he, 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 he poses uh, and the point where it uh, uh, appears or emerges that the problems uh, have no, uh, in fact, uh, si single, unilateral, uniform uh, 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 solution, but in fact, open several antithetic possibilities. Of course, this is embarrassing because uh, you do not write a book that is supposed to become the Bible of the work in the international uh, uh, labor movement, which of course he also wanted capital to be. Uh, if you uh, write at each uh, uh, end of a chapter, uh, look, uh, this is problematic. Perhaps it could be the opposite. Uh, perhaps it, we should go in the uh, opposite direction. Uh, so in a sense, there is also movement in the text, uh, and that is not uh, the absolute opposite of, of theory that uh, uh, imposes a forcing, as uh, we would say in the logical uh, uh, terminology, uh, or a choice, uh, or a choice of one solution as uh, opposed to another one. But when you realize reading the whole corpus as we now know it, as we now know it, as we now have access to it, uh, that the uh, uh, possibilities that had been uh, at some point uh, marginalized or uh, eliminated or uh, uh, suppressed uh, are returning uh, in quasi-Freudian uh, uh, manner as a return of the uh, repressed. Uh, and uh, uh, begin to challenge the uh, existing uh, 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 um, uh, discourse. Uh, that, of course, is is I, is to me uh, today and to others the the key uh, the key the key the key issue. Yeah. So that's why um, when I read the two passages, uh, this is the core or one of the core elements uh, of the. Uh, of capital, within capital, that uh, we both refer to uh, in our discussion. Uh, the passage at the end of, uh, towards the end, I will not repeat what I say in the article um, regarding this bizarre uh, location of the passage in the, in the, in the, in the volume. Uh, so towards the end of capital volume one, um, ending with the famous formula, the expropriators are expropriated, whose uh, origins, uh, literal, uh, literal origins, verbal origins, uh, I tried to trace back to an extraordinary over-determination of uh, traces, precisely of sources, uh, on the one hand, uh, the vocabulary of the uh, extreme, uh, uh, the radical wing of the French uh, Revolution, uh, um, uh, uh, Babeuf, etc., uh, raising the the flag of Spartacus uh, against the uh, against private property, uh, and uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, a typical messianic formula. Uh, I believe to be the one who has uh, made that connection. And, and I found some justifications. Initially, I didn't know the Hebrew text, but uh, uh, that is uh, two passages from Isaiah, uh, uh, the book of Isaiah, which have very famous sources of the messianic uh, vision of the coming of future coming uh, of the 
uh, redemption uh, where the prophet uh, says, it doesn't say you're going to expropriate your expropriators, but he writes, you're going to oppress your oppressors. And uh, uh, in fact, several uh, formulas like that. So this uh, uh, passage, uh, ultra famous is one of the texts. And the other one is the one that you quoted uh, again a moment ago uh, from uh, Capital Volume 3, uh, where to your uh, dismay, uh, to your surprise, to your indignation, uh, Marx uh, would uh, propose that uh, 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 within the current forms or developments, social innovations, I would say, of the capitalist society, there are two which could be considered or which ought to be considered as kind of uh, uh, stepping stones uh, towards a post-capitalist uh, 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 order. And, and so if he had only said workers' cooperatives, uh, you would be very happy. And you would say, uh, only Marx should not express these reservations. They are, he doesn't speak of petit bourgeois uh, attitude, but they are, uh, they remain caught in the logic uh, of capitalism, which clearly uh, means something like, like it or not, they are operating on a market. And the laws of uh, uh, surviving on a market are making profits. So if he had only written that, he would be very happy, but uh, very happy. But unfortunately, he also has the strange idea of adding that the new developments of financial capital, especially credit uh, 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 banking, you know, and what he has in mind are the recent developments of, uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 financial capital uh, led by former Saint Simonians. Uh, this is very in France. In, 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 in France, are also put on uh, on, on on a par. So the tension is undoubtedly maximum, and the heterogeneity uh, of the of these uh, two uh, aspects is 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 uh, is, is incredible. Uh, now. Um, uh, um, uh, what I found remarkable when I uh, reread all these uh, passages uh, was the fact that um, the argument uh, about the logic, I would say, of, and I return to that, of the socialization of labor, uh, socialization that for Marx uh, was uh, the most important historical effect or the historical tendency of the development of, of capitalism, both calling for a socialist uh, uh, over, overcoming and uh, preparing perhaps dialectically the emergence of that, <laughs> of that new form. This in both cases, is at the center of the uh, of the uh, 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 argument, and the key terms are uh, concentration of uh, 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 property and increased cooperation among uh, workers or uh, laborers. Uh, so, in a sense, uh, in a sense, it seems that uh, uh, Marx is talking about exactly the same uh, process. But then the tone, and not only the tone, but the explicit uh, uh, um, uh, conclusion uh, of both uh, uh, passages is totally uh, uh, divergent. Uh, so in a sense, I'm more interested or I'm equally interested in the fact that from the same considerations on concentration of property and uh, and, uh, and cooperation of labor, uh, uh, Marx, uh, 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 I'm more interested in the fact that he uh, pushes, the, the, that he draws opposite lessons from the same uh, 
description or her analysis. And to put it uh, in a, in a, in a very, um, in a very uh, summary uh, way, I would say, I would say, you could say that uh, verbally at least, uh, the passage at the end of Capital Volume One is uh, ultra revolutionary. Mm -hmm. Not only because of the messianic terms, you know, but because of the whole environment and the references to uh, through a footnote uh, to the Communist Manifesto, etc. It's centering on the it's centered on the idea that without a new moment of revolutionary violence, violence uh, that breaks the chains uh, within which uh, uh, the society has been. Uh, uh, enclosed and contained uh, by, 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 by the capitalist logic, nothing will emerge. Uh, so a death knell has to sound, uh, the death knell. And of course, the idea is that uh, uh, the people, the workers, the proletariat, etc., will, 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 will do that. They will, they will destroy. Uh, violently uh, the uh, uh, existing uh, structure. Whereas it, the, the passage in Capital Volume 3, should we say that it is reformist? Uh, yes, in a sense, perhaps a good sense or perhaps a strong uh, 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 sense. Uh, uh, the, focus, the, the, the emphasis is not on the ways, uh, whether peaceful or uh, or violent, uh, uh, insurrectional, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, uh, the old society will, uh, will, be, uh, will be transformed, uh, will be transformed. The, the, the emphasis is on the idea that within the current society, the germs or the conditions of possibility uh, or the uh, progressive uh, forms whose content already bypasses or overcomes the, the, the it's the other face of the coin. You know, he, he may write that uh, there's still caught in certain capitalist uh, 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 conditions and structures, market, uh, but he also, also writes <clears throat> that they are uh, creating or illustrating or anticipating something that is no longer capitalist or, 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 or bourgeois. Huh? So um, I, in my article, proposed to read also other passages in, in Marx. Uh, and the central idea was, uh, was and we would agree, I, I believe, on the terminology, that there is always an eschatology in Marx. And uh, there's no doubt. There's always an eschatology. But the forms, uh, the, 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 the manner in which he um, imagines, I would say, uh, the so-called transition, uh, transition or transformation of capitalism into socialism is continuously um, is continuously re-elaborated. Uh, now, last, uh, uh, I hope I'm not bothering you too much. No, this is great. This is great. Uh, so last remark that I want to, 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 to make on that is the, is the following. I spoke of the writing and the dissemination of uh, the meaning in Marx's writing. Now, we, we need to be careful about the uh, chronology and the... Uh, and the uh, we need not. We can, we can't impose. I would say uh, uh, a kind of uh, experimental or existential or uh, historical order ordering on that. And in particular, of course, we 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 should not. And you said it. Uh, we should not uh, say something like uh, in Capital Volume One. Uh, Marx proposes the first vision of the uh, uh, transition process. And then in the material he had prepared for Capital Volume 3, um, he uh, uh, adopted a different view. Because it is not uh, like that, that the texts are uh, uh, written. Uh, 
Chronologically, the passages in Capital Volume 3 are uh, preceding. They were written earlier than the uh, conclusion chapter of Capital Volume 1. And so let's not return to the whole, etc. <laughs> but to put it roughly, uh, the passages in <coughs> passages in capital volume three are uh, can be dated the years um, um, the late fifties, the early sixties. That is uh, shortly after the Grundrisse that Tony Negri and others made a kind of new. Uh, starting point for the interpretation of uh, uh, Marx. And uh, of course, uh, before the writing of Capital Volume uh, uh, One. And uh, the, the, the job that Engels did uh, uh, following Marx's indications of the plan to be followed to write the continuation of Capital and uh, reading. Uh, uh, Marx's manuscripts, uh, terrible thing, because uh, Marx's, he had no computer. <laughs> so Marx's handwriting is almost illegible. In his lifetime, Engels uh, said, I am the only one who can decipher these manuscripts. And when he was about to die himself, he took uh, a, a group of uh, some later well-known uh, Marxist uh, uh, activists and, uh, and uh, essentially Kautsky and Bernstein, and he, he gave them lessons how to read Marx's writing so that they could continue what he had started, which they did. But uh, uh, so uh, he would find uh, in the, the, the huge amount of uh, paper left by Marx, uh, the elements that could be put at this place or that following Marx's indication, so as to build kind of imaginary, in fact, a continuation of Capital uh, uh, Volume One. But that leads, and all my life, in a sense, I was thinking about that, or oh, very soon, and many others do it. And there's a very interesting trend today of uh, reflection on that uh, question of the late Marx. Our very our own uh, colleague and friend in this university, Bruno Bostils, uh, is one of them. He's just published a remarkable uh, uh, book in Spanish, but hopefully it was translated into English, and, uh, on the question of the late Marx and the combination of references that Marx was beginning to uh, introduce in his thinking beyond the critique of political, political economy, the ethnological material, uh, elaborating an idea of the commune uh, or the, uh, that owed something to the Paris Commune, 1874, but also something to the uh, Russian and uh, perhaps even Mexican uh, traditional communities, etc. So all my life, I was asking myself the question, why did Marx not publish the continuation himself, the continuation of his, uh, of his book? Now, because Capital Volume 1 was published in 1867. 1867. Now, there are obvious answers, possible answers uh, for that. The first answer is he no longer had time because he had become uh, so uh, completely involved in the political uh, work, mm -hmm. organizing the first international, facing the internal divisions of that, uh, of that uh, political uh, organization or body, his permanent conflict with Bakunin uh, and others. Um, and the contemporary events, the wars. Uh, you don't, if you if you look at Marx's complete works in the German standard edition, you of course have works uh, on uh, capitalism, etc. But you have volumes and volumes about the Crimean War, the the the, the um, etc. etc. So yeah. 
So that's the first explanation. He no longer has time. Right? The second, which is not incompatible with that, of course, is is ill, right? worse than bronchitis. Right? Uh, it's it's he, he he and it's probably psycho uh, psycho physiological. Right? He was uh, uh, suffering uh, kind of uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, um, irritation Rash, of rations. the uh? rations. Yes, I, I, I'm not sure about the word. I mean, uh, uh, la, uh, what's the name for la peau? Uh, the, the skin. The skin, uh? mm -hmm. uh, the skin was kind of irritated, uh, and that creates a absolutely unbearable uh, uh, suffering. And he was not sleeping, etc., etc., etc. But then, of course, I came to the idea that. Uh, that in fact, in fact, Marx, and that's what I perhaps most admire. And that's why we're standing for Marx. Like, uh, undoubtedly, Marx was a convinced revolutionary. There's no doubt about it. He certainly wanted to contribute, and perhaps uh, that was his paranoia or his uh, his uh, his his folly uh, to contribute to to the world revolution in a manner that uh, had, had <laughs> no equivalent. He had rivals, of course, uh, anarchists, uh, uh, socialists uh, of all sorts who were writing excellent uh, and very interesting uh, pamphlets, blueprints for the new society. But <laughs> he thought he could, he could find the, the the guiding thread for the uh, historical tra 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 transformation, working day and night. But there was something that was, I believe, equally important for him, and I have no better word than the, the big word. It was truth. Uh, you know, uh, so that's why I find it funny when you you write was you write that Marx was wrong, because I imagine Marx rereading his Capital volume one, and he says to himself, he must have said to himself something like, I'm probably wrong. <laughs> and so that leads to uh, a kind of infinite deconstructive, yeah. reconstructive work, yeah. which uh, uh, of course uh, okay, is testified by many uh, uh, etc and which uh, reopens as i was trying to say the uh, suppressed possibilities and reopen or creates new uh, uh, and therefore of course the book is unfinished right? and it is bound to remain unfinished and all the uh, 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 hopes and imaginations of uh, uh, later Marxists, mm -hmm. who in fact uh, believe that they will put the final uh, seed, you know, on the theory, are uh, down to 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 to, to failure. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are two things that I wanted to say more specifically uh, about uh, cooperation. If you allow me, if you give yes. me a few a few yeah. a few more minutes. So, <laughs> first thing that I, uh, well, three things. Huh? Well, that's perhaps too much, but um, the first thing is that, um, well, in the shadow of all that discussion is Marx's controversy with Proudhon. Now, Proudhon is, uh, is not uh, perfectly, uh, acceptable guy in some respects. Uh, in your book, you quote uh, horrible anti-Semitic uh, uh, development that was not published at the time, but Udo's anti-Semitism was well known uh, or was expressed. And his uh, anti-feminism or his sexism is equal to that. Uh, well, nevertheless, uh, Houdon is a, is a strong and for powerful uh, uh, intellectual figure, and he represented an alternative to uh, Marx's orientation. 
And Marx had written in 1847 the famous book, 1847. Houdon, this is Besançon, the same place where uh, Leap uh, is an important part of the uh, tradition uh, from which the Leap uh, story comes, traces back to Houdon and perhaps to some extent also Fourier. Uh, Okay, so in 1847, Marx writes uh, 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 a violent uh, refutation of Houdon. How do you call that? A ruthless critique. Mm. A ruthless critique, just as your critique of Marx is ruthless. Mm. Huh? <laughs> and so uh, that's the good thing. And, uh, so he writes a ruthless critique of uh, Marx, known in English as uh, Poverty of philosophy. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not uninteresting to remember that this was written by Marx in French, Misère de la philosophie, because Marx was absolutely fluent, equally fluent uh, in French and in German. He, that's owing to his history and family background. So he writes this uh, refutation, which is full of uh, remarkable uh, formulas. To, to, okay. to a book that was called The Philosophy of Poverty, right? Who yes, so absolutely. Flipping the philosophy right. de la misère, to which Marx uh, replies with the poverty of uh, philosophy, taking poverty, of course, in a different uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different sense. Uh, the problem that Houdon addresses is uh, is Piketty's problem. It's essentially, it's a uh, huge inequality. The, continuous uh, extension of uh, economic and social uh, inequality. So it's an important part of social. Uh, but at the core, I will not go into every detail. At the core of uh, Marx's uh, refutation of Proudhon or a significant moment is uh, an argument um, which I uh, summarize as uh, uh, following. Uh, as, as follows, division of labor, uh, division of labor is a, is a key concept uh, used by uh, economists, uh, especially Adam Smith. And uh, later, of course, uh, by sociologists, it's a key concept in modern sociology, Durkheim uh, and all that. Uh, supposed to form the, 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 the basis, the key for the understanding of what keeps together organically, as uh, Durkheim would say uh, later, uh, a society which is both first, uh, let's do, put that quickly, complex, uh, complex, uh, meaning that uh, uh, the activities of uh, 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 people, individuals, groups, go into many uh, 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 heterogeneous directions, and and this diversity and this complexity is continuously growing. Uh, so, which takes us uh, increasingly uh, far away from what was supposed at the time in a very evolutionary view. Uh, to have been the uh, logic of traditional communities uh, uh, where uh, you have four or five uh, types of activities and uh, either people are distributed among them or they uh, shift from one moment to, to another, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et so these uh, uh, such societies are increasingly diversified or complex the core idea in Adam Smith, of course. And second, they are increasingly individualistic. And this is, of course, one of the uh, uh, core issues that uh, uh, Bernard uh, takes up. Uh, so, and therefore, of course, the importance of competition, uh, the importance of competition uh, and the valorization of competition uh, the animal spirits uh, mm -hmm. that you were uh, uh, mentioning, uh, namely not only the fact that it creates tension or uh, oppositions among uh, 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 people, but the idea, very, of course, disputable, and uh, today lots of people uh, would want to dispute that, but it had been a kind of 
uh, common uh, postulate for uh, uh, generations after the Enlightenment uh, uh, make uh, uh, a factor, a permanent factor of progress. Uh, of progress. So um, Marx's, uh, 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 they have the same basis in a sense, Proudhon and, uh, and, and Marx, which is the Smithian idea of the division of labor. And as Marx had explained very uh, clearly in the uh, manuscript called the German ideology, they also believe that there is a kind of uh, correlation uh, between the uh, or, or symmetry, if you like, or between the uh, uh, history and the evolution of the division of labor and the history of property and the forms of property. Uh, Marx had written himself, property and division of labor are two sides of the same uh, uh, coin. Uh, but of course, here property is mainly uh, uh, understood, is understood as private, as, as private property. So, so what Marx writes in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 the, in Misery of Philosophy is that Monsieur Proudhon, he's extremely uh, uh, scornful, I mean, master, uh, he plays the master, uh, discourse of the master. I would wish Monsieur Proudhon does not read uh, uh, very well what is to be found in the economy, is the fact <laughs> But, but the division of labor in the modern society refers to two completely different phenomena. So one of them, this is not very difficult to understand, of course. So one of them is uh, the division of labor uh, that uh, under Pins and and and. Uh, and is, is associated with the development of the market and uh, the market. And so it's a social division of labor, meaning that uh, different services, goods, produces that we all need for our uh, uh, life. Uh -huh. And which of course, everybody agrees on that, uh, change over time and uh, again, multiply and become uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, permanently uh, recreated uh, by the uh, uh, history of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the commodity uh, form itself. Uh, uh, means that these are produced, these are produced not by the society acting as a kind of uh, single, uh, entrepreneur, uh, if you like, uh, but by completely independent uh, 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 producing units. Uh, units. Uh, and of course, these independent units can be either in a, in a first rudimentary or, or uh, uh, early uh, form, so-called individual producers, uh, craftsmen, artisans, etc. And later, of course, they become uh, uh, firms, uh, corporations, uh, even very big uh, corporations. Uh, but it is not, uh, and, but, but the important the important point is that they be independent. Uh, and that leads to the idea, of course, that the labor force itself is distributed among uh, production units, if you like, who have no, which have no ex ante uh, coordination uh, uh, among themselves. Of course, at some point, the ideal, the utopia, and even at some point, the technical uh, uh, reality or attempted reality to reverse this situation by introducing something like central planning. Uh, will emerge. And that will be part, of course, of uh, an, uh, an essential part of the socialist uh, program or, or idea. But it comes only after. So that's one meaning of the idea of, uh, and this it is the one, of course, that is most uh, explicitly, and um, in fact, I would say uh, um, in the proper sense, I mean, associated in the proper sense with the idea of competition. 
And then there's another meaning of the uh, uh, idea of division of labor, which in Marx's uh, uh, view refers at, the, at this moment, at this moment, refers to uh, the organization of labor, uh, the organization of labor uh, within a single uh, production unit, for example, a factory uh, or a workshop or a factory, in order to combine different labor forces with different skills, with different uh, 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 activities, uh, activities to produce one single, one single uh, use value or object of use. Uh, so, for example, if you return for a minute to the uh, uh, to yesterday's uh, 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 movie. Uh, um, it's not discussed in, in, in detail, but you, if you read that with Marx's lens in uh, his uh, critique of uh, Proudhon, it leads to the, these two problems. First, uh, uh, what kind of place do we occupy on a market, uh, which is uh, national, but also international and tendentially global? Uh, and uh, uh, is there a, 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 are there bias for the kind of object that we make and sell? So, and uh, that changes, of course, continuously. And, uh, today, the auto automobile uh, makers uh, are facing the question: Will there be a market for uh, uh, gas uh, uh, cars, or will everything be replaced by elect uh, electrical uh, uh, engines and so on? And on the other hand, on the other side, you have the question of the uh, division of labor within the factory. That is answering the question: Which people make watches, and what are their different skills? And how do they work together? An expression that Marx uh, uh, also uses, of course, in, uh, in Capital. So in a sense, Marx's uh, thought throughout his life, uh, throughout his life, was remained governed uh, by the idea that if you confuse these two uh, uh, meanings uh, or these two uh, functions, perhaps, uh, these two uh, um, uh, structures, which can be uh, uh, or used to be uh, called with the same name, division of labor, uh, you will certainly understand nothing in the in the working of the of the of the capitalist uh, uh, production production uh, uh, system. And to reach the conclusion uh, quickly, I take it. I take it that the critique that you so that is you you want to 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 redeem or that is so difficult for you to accept in the, the passages of Marxist capital uh, once again are based on that. Uh, so Marx would probably not deny, uh, of course not. Uh, that there is something revolutionary, if you like, or, uh, or innova completely innovatory in the fact that the division of labor or the organization of labor, the cooperation, uh, the modes of working together within the factory uh, are become, uh, uh, become profoundly or even essentially transformed when the workers are no longer obeying the orders of uh, a manager or a, a representative of capital, but are self-determined and uh, uh, setting up their own modes of cooperation. But then he would say, I'm sorry, guy, this changes absolutely nothing. Uh, to the fact of this as such, as an isolated phenomenon, changes absolutely nothing to the fact that uh, uh, the factory or the uh, uh, productive unit or the group of factories uh, is uh, 
uh, located on a market, uh, which is a, a capitalist uh, uh, market, whose laws, so to speak, or rules, if you prefer, are competition, profit, accumulation. Therefore, either they will, one way or another, uh, adapt to that logic yeah, and impose uh, some of its uh, consequences uh, uh, inside their uh, modes of, uh, of, of organization, yeah, which can easily lead to an apparently uh, absurd idea, but in practice, very, very uh, effective, namely self-exploitation. Uh, or they will sooner or later uh, uh, collapse, uh, collapse. So that's the first uh, uh, point. Uh, additional remark on this, um, what is our point of view on that idea? So I tend to believe that um, it's very strong. Uh, it's very strong. As long as precisely there exist such entities as uh, a, a, a market, a general market on one side, and enter firms or enterprises or pr production units. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the most striking uh, effects of recent, recent last uh, decades, uh, recent globalization and financialization of, <laughs> of capital was what used uh, uh, to be what uses to be called i believe it's the same in english and in uh, <laughs> french the dissemination of the value chains uh, so the dissemination of the value chains means that speaking of watches or cars uh, or whatever this idea this structure of the uh, factory within which, of course, you need uh, <coughs> com components that you may uh, subcontract, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But essentially, the factory is a unit within which you make cars, and so uh, the dissemination of the of the of the value chains means that there no longer exists any place where you make a car. Right? There are places where you make uh, 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 some parts of the engine, others where you make the wheels, others where you make the carrosserie, uh, what's the term in English for that? Uh, uh, and there is one place, yes, where you assemble all, 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 all that. But they are located in completely different parts of the world. And certainly, that's the important point, the workers, uh, they are usually, uh, well, they can belong to the same big financial corporation, but essentially uh, they're not uh, uh, under the, the command of the, of the same capitals. And certainly there doesn't exist something, uh, which of course was Marx's uh, core uh, conviction, what he puts under this notion of the concentration and the concentration goes along with the so-called socialization of labor. Uh, so there's no place where people, uh, workers, proletarians, if you want to call them like that, work together. And uh, this is one of the great achievements of uh, neoliberal capitalism. There's no place where people work together. Uh, and so <laughs> that also means, of course, that the rules of competition, uh, et cetera, et cetera, invade, I would say, uh, what for Marx and some of his contemporaries, and perhaps some of your friends of the cooperatives, remains a kind of uh, holy of holies, uh, where uh, uh, labor can uh, uh, change for. So I'm too long. But second point, and I'll add it. And, and, and so I, uh, very quickly, second point, the chapter on cooperation in Marx's capital that you posted uh, is an extraordinary chapter, but it has to be read in the um, 
context of the dialectical uh, mode of exposition, the famous mode of exposition of Marx's capital. So um, uh, what he do it does, this chapter, it, it does two things. Um, it introduces a general, <coughs> general notion of, of cooperation, which I would summarize very uh, uh, simply in the following manner. Um, historically, historically, uh, um, there existed forms of collective uh, labor or activity. Uh, especially, he's very insistent on that. Uh, uh, they were all fascinated by that. Uh, in the, the big, uh, uh, grands travaux, the big, uh, uh, works works uh, of uh, ancient uh, societies uh, uh, Egypt uh, uh, building the pyramids uh, 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 Indian uh, today Pakistani uh, uh, societies uh, uh, or uh, Aztec uh, societies creating the whole network of uh, water uh, canals, uh, which make it possible for uh, 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 myriads of, of small producers to to till their uh, to cultivate their land and so on. So that, of course, meant cooperation with a very strong commander, uh, of course. Yeah. And then uh, uh, in 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 the countryside and uh, the traditional uh, agriculture also contained uh, uh, interesting forms of cooperation. Marx insists, he's almost writing like Marcel Mauss or some other uh, uh, et et ethnologist, you know, the uh, periodic variations of the uh, uh, Inuit societies. There is a moment in which everyone goes into his uh, or her own direction, and there's a moment when you can, you need to, 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 to collaborate and to, because uh, you can't do the harvest uh, uh, on your own. You need, uh, etc. But that's nothing. That's very little compared to the extent to which uh, uh, cooperation is developed in the modern society, in the industrial society. And this is the first idea. This was made originally possible by the fact, the mere fact, that different laborers and workers craftsmen initially of course huh? were found themselves as wage workers under the commando of the same capital capital and capitalist uh, boss huh? so it was capital that imposed in marx's description uh, co uh, uh, new possibilities i would say uh, uh, of cooperation unto the individual workers and for this reason, he writes an ideological effect, but with huge economic consequences, the enormous benefits in terms of the creation of value, and he describes this at uh, length, of the uh, uh, collective or cooperative work with respect to completely individualized uh, uh, work. Uh, again, I come to the same formula, the working together uh, the effects are presented and of course uh, uh, vindicated and justified uh, as uh, uh, an achievement of the, cap of the, of the capitalist system. Uh, so, and for that reason, of course, it's only uh, uh, necessary and inevitable that who, uh, uh, earns the, uh, the, 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 the profit are not the workers, but the capitalists. Mm -hmm. But at some point, of course, Marx's idea is that this could be reversed, uh, that this could be reversed, uh, that the workers could not only uh, get to the idea, but impose uh, the idea that, uh, as in Lip, uh, Lip is a is a, is a very simple form of, of cooperation, technically speaking. Uh, so impose the idea that uh, 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 the uh, um, uh, increase in productivity that cooperation produces is their own 
is their own achievement. And that they could even uh, push it uh, further by liberating themselves from the hierarchic and uh, uh, violent forms, in fact, of capitalist uh, a command such as uh, terrorism, et cetera, et cetera, which has remains to be proven, of course, because the capitalists will explain that if you leave the, the workers alone and if they have to uh, self-organize their work, what it will produce will be anarchy, et cetera, et cetera. Then the second, <laughs> the second element that the chapter uh, uh, contains is a description of elementary forms of cooperation. Elementary forms of cooperation are the ones that are um, uh, there uh, at the beginning of this process only when uh, pr pr individual producers are brought simultaneously under the uh, commando of uh, uh, the single master, which is the, 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 the capitalist boss. Yeah? And this is what Marx in a different uh, place, uh, very important terminology that it calls a formal subsumption of labor under capital. Yeah? Meaning that you can interpret it like that, that uh, uh, if, you, if you abstract, from the commando of capital. And if the economic uh, conditions are there, the workers can return to their previous uh, uh, condition. They're still able to produce something. Uh, but then this, the following chapters continue the same uh, uh, reflection and they bring in a notion of the transformation of the formal subsumption into a so-called real subsumption. And the key moment, leave aside the manufacturer, which would be the most relevant for interpreting it, uh, of course, is his interpretation of the Industrial Revolution. And the interpretation of the Industrial Revolution is, uh, is uh, roughly the following. Huh? Uh, uh, when you, uh, at the beginning, when you think of working together, huh, this means that you have people, uh, in living people, uh, men and women, who, get, who assemble in the, in, the, in the same place. They join forces, as Marx this describes very eloquently. And each of them, of course, uses his or her tools. But what makes the, the unity or the organic uh, <laughs> unity, what transforms individuals into a body, a collective uh, a producing body, is the coming together of the uh, uh, men and women pushed by capital. With the Industrial Revolution, this is totally transformed and becomes its absolute opposite. Uh, individuals do not come together. Uh, they are subjected to the movement, <laughs> movement as Marx describes, and the movement of the machinery uh, of the machinery, they become not, they are not using tools. Uh, they become servants of uh, a, a, a mechanic system. He found in uh, English uh, uh, technologists of the 19th century, Ure and Babbage and others, uh, uh, the, the, the information he needed. So from this very moment, it's a form of radical alienation, if you like. Uh, radical alienation. The, what the unity of the uh, um, productive process is provided by the technology, uh, and which needs some engineers, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the workers are only the kind of uh, mem. What's the term for membre? The limbs. Uh, the, the limbs of that big mechanical uh, 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 organism. And of course, the extreme form of that, which you don't see in Lib, I don't know about Mondragon, I don't know what they produce, but the extreme form of that is Taylorism. Right? Taylorism. So what Marx explains at this point is that the workers are no longer, in fact, uh, forming 
a, 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 a collective body. And therefore, of course, the idea of cooperating must either disappear, disappear, or uh, become completely uh, transformed. Now, the directions into which you have to go to uh, in order to transform that are multiple. And one of the most interesting, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a grand utopia in a sense, but it's also a very interesting suggestion, uh, was the one that, uh, that Tony Negri and his uh, friends uh, introduced, picking up the notion of the general intellect that they had found in a corner of, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the text. Of, of Marxist text, in which they explain, yes, of course, in a sense, the workers are losing every autonomy as uh, they are just appendices, Marx writes, of the, of the technological uh, uh, system. But on the other hand, at, at least virtually, but Negri uh, did believe that this uh, came into, into, in, in, into, into reality they became intellectual or they could beca become intellectual uh, um, directors uh, or users of the technological uh, uh, system. And of course, again, contemporary capitalism raises a terrible uh, challenge to that. Uh, uh, which is uh, perhaps there is something like the intelli inte intellectualization of labor, but then intellectualization of labor becomes transformed into automatization, and automatization becomes transformed into uh, uh, overall uh, 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 introduction of uh, artificial intelligence uh, 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 procedures and, and, and logics. Uh, and at that point, at that point, it's no, not only the case that uh, uh, the workers are subjected physically to a, 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 a productive system which they don't master, but it's the case that they are eliminated or pushed uh, uh, to uh, uh, the margins and the most disqualified uh, uh, forms of uh, labor. So I'm not saying that uh, this uh, destroys the idea of cooperation, but I'm, I have the strong impression, uh, allow me to be a little, not critical, but uh, to push you a little bit. You know? Wherever you speak of cooperation in the realm of labor, it seems to me that you still have in mind uh, these uh, uh, early uh, uh, craftsmen, artisans, uh, who can decide to uh, uh, form a collective body of uh, action, action, activity, based on their interactions, you know, their interactions, their mutual relations. What Marx was describing was a progressive elimination of interaction among the, 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 the workers. And what we are witnessing to be is perhaps uh, a step even be, 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 be beyond that. So that doesn't, of course, cancel the idea of cooperation, but it raises the question of where and when the uh, participants, I would say, in a cooperative uh, uh, activity, uh, find uh, themselves uh, together uh, as uh, uh, partners, I would say. And finally, the very last thing I want to do, I know I'm terribly abusing and I'm returning quickly to Lenin, is the fact that I would agree with you very much on the idea that something is wrong in Marx's description of the cooperatives in the infamous passage of Capital, volume three, uh, what I find missing in that description uh, is not uh, a dialectical or a solution to the uh, uh, problem of the uh, 
problematic unity of opposites, uh, uh, a social form that has one foot in the past and the other in the future, one in the capitalist uh, logic on the capitalist market, and the other one uh, uh, beyond precisely uh, uh, competition, individualism in, 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 in collective uh, self-determination. Self I, I believe that this tension is, <laughs> but, um, I repeat, is the strength of the, of, the, of the idea, not its weakness. But what I find completely missing, strangely, uh, perhaps because of the context, is the political dimension. It's the political dimension. It's the idea that uh, a different organization of labor, a different relationship to uh, uh, the ownership of the of the uh, 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 of the factory is a political <coughs> in change, a radical political change, perhaps. And that's why <coughs> that's why Lib is interesting. And that's why I uh, think we can agree on the importance of Lenin uh, uh, of Lenin's uh, 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 intervention, yeah. because the reason why Lenin in 1923, when the revolution is uh, is dramatically collapsing, uh, 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 turns towards this uh, uh, these uh, inventions, these uh, exactly what Stalinism will completely crash. Yeah. Uh, uh, of the of the workers themselves is probably not the fact, or not only, or not uh, only the fact that they reorganize the production in the factories with a different concept of the conception of the organization. Perhaps that does exist, of course, necessarily, but it's the fact that it's uh, that they invent a political uh, uh, way of. Uh, um, uh, Acting, I would say, on the social relationships of uh, of, of, of labor. Mm -hmm. I'm awfully sorry for the uh, scandalous. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Boring, uh, not at all. Um, and uh, I almost feel as if we're ending in a similar place. Um, um, on that. And I'll come back to it. So I, I don't want to take too much time because I do want to open it up for conversation. Uh, but I do want to say a few things um, to, to start with. I mean, one thing that I was clearly thinking about as you were, as we were working through all of the different pieces from uh, the poverty of philosophy all the way to um, the Gothic program, but also through the capital is that maybe what we really need is a, a Marx 1313 uh, that would do all of this work uh, next year. So, but then we'd have to take a, take a leaf from the leap ouvrier and, um, and hold you hostage here for the year. Uh, Etienne. Um, okay. So uh, let me, let me just say a few things and, 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 uh, and I apologize for interpolating you so uh, that, I, that you felt interpolated by that. Yes, I, 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 uh, I understand it as I'm often put in a similar position with regard to Foucault's work. I, 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 I felt the, I, I felt bad about that, but uh, sorry it's, about it's, that. It's, it's terrible when you, when you bear a kind of stamp. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, okay. So, um, I that was that was extraordinary. Um, I I think I think I think we do end up in a very similar, at least uh, descriptive moment at the end, particularly when you were talking about um, the poverty, uh, the 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 uh, the poverty of philosophy and Lenin. I think that I just want to make sure that kind of like. There's there's a slight balance in the way maybe what I was trying to say was less about interpreting Marx than understanding also the contemporary reiterations of this critique in the context of cooperatives today, right? So so there's something about it's 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 less a question of um, textual analysis 
of the disparate sections in Marx than a way in which some of the language and argumentation continues to today and continues to produce this kind of ongoing Marxist critique of cooperatives today, right? And so, so that somehow is important to me, um, separate from a, a brilliant textual analysis of whether the, the text itself is open, which is your argument, and I understand that the, the text itself is open. There were many other um, possibilities. There were many other possible endings. There's the quasi-totalitarian biopolitics not ending. Not infinitely right? open, of course. Not infinitely, but that there are a few, at least three. I mean, you propose at least three possible endings to the capital, right? There's the indefinite social war ending, right? There's the uh, the plus, total subjection. Plus, plus the nihilistic one. Plus the nihilistic one. So um, I'm... I'm satisfied. I mean, I, 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 I think that's brilliant, and I see that. Um, what I'm particularly interested, though, is the way in which one particular critique that is in that comes through in the language of Marx, for instance, when he talks about reactionary workers of the atelier or retrograde step or sectarian movement, that there's something about the language of that that then Absolutely. gets Absolutely. replicated to Absolutely. the point where there is this today constant friction. I agree. I yeah. agree. And my interpretation of that is that Marx had thought arrogantly, I would say, that he, in 1847, had killed Proudhon as a thinker forever. <laughs> and then, throughout his life, Proudhonian ideas, Proudhonian problems, return, mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. back, either in the spirits and minds of the workers with whom he tries to build an international organization, or, which is even worse in a sense, from within his own uh, 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 theory. So he's extremely angry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. He's extremely right. angry. Right. Um, and that then has, path, there are certain kind of path dependencies that give that a... a and therefore he becomes a, aggressive. Right, yeah. Yeah. And but but the aggressivity in a way, I mean, so what I'm interested in focusing on in part is the motivational, the psychological dimensions yes. um, in terms of kind of when, when you when you have that, then there's both motivationally, it's hard to imagine people coming from a left Marxist tradition wanting to engage in these forms of say cooperatives right because of the because of the motivational problem of being so considered so retrograde right um and but also the psychological transformations having to do within the cooperative and and you were mentioning that in terms of like how a cooperative can result in transformation of uh, the worker, the the person's relationship to their work, others, etc. Um, we 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 did have a, a, a evidence of that, or there was illustrations of that in the Leap film, right? Of the way that that was transforming them. That the and and again, you know, they were paying themselves. Of course, it was on a with a market mentality, right? They had to pay their rent, they had to pay yes. their cars, they had to, right? But the way in which they were, that there there was this frisson that they all experienced about being able to, you know, pay yourself, to work yourself, produce yourself, sell yourself, pay yourself somehow. That's amazing, and, but a good, uh, a good willing Marx, and with a little bit of psychology, precisely, could have reacted to that, and I take it seriously, um, in the following manner, we witness the very core of the contradiction, which is both historical, political, and, and, uh, and subjective, existential. 
because on, on the one hand, they are enormously proud of the fact that they have become autonomous. And the uh, material uh, basis of that autonomy is just that. It's we no longer need a boss, a capitalist, right. to make a living. We can, they are shuffled us, as uh, Angela Merkel would say. We, we make it ourselves. Okay. Or as uh, Georges Segui uh, says, etc. We are demonstrating that the, the capitalists need workers, but the workers don't need capitalists. Right. On the other hand, what they, uh, in a kind of Frankfurt School vaguely uh, uh, orientation, you might say, they prove also that they are completely alienated to the wage form. Huh? That is, they, they have no uh, idea that you could be something else, uh, that you could live in a society which is not based on wages. <laughs> and in a sense, I have to say they are right, uh, because uh, in the moment in, in which they are, and, and we are, without a wage, uh, a normal wage for a normal labor day, blah, 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 <laughs> you just die. There's an extraordinary passage in Capital at the end of volume one, where Marx, uh, Marx writes the following. I, I had noted that uh, as an answer, as an element of answer to the question for the workers, for the capitalist workers, who is the master? Where is, where and who is the master? And the answer is twofold. And Marx is very explicit on that. And that's where the question of the division of labor, the double aspect of the division of labor, powerfully returns into the dispute. If you consider the factory, uh, Leap or any other, uh, or Foxconn, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or uh, uh, Detroit, etc. The master is, uh, is, uh, is, not, is not a person, uh, but the master is a, is a, is a, is a, is a boss. It's a collective boss. And you're subjected of course, contractually, there are uh, you negotiate uh, the conditions in, uh, under which you 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 subject to 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 his uh, will, uh, but you're under his will. So this is a, a dictatorial master, visible, visible, material. But then, uh, uh, in in a, in a, in another passage of uh, at the end of Capital Volume One. Marx writes this beautifully, he, he was a writer, there's no doubt. Uh, he, he writes, uh, in the Roman society or the uh, ancient societies, the slaves were attached to their masters by visible, tangible, iron chains. Uh, whereas in the uh, modern capitalist society, they are attached, uh, they are the workers are attached to their master, and he speaks of servitude. Uh, so they're attached to their master by invisible chains. Uh, and these invisible chains, of course, that's the market itself. So the master here is not a, any individual or single uh, 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 capitalist. Uh, it's, 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 it's the market structure as, uh, as such. It's the fact that uh, if you lose your job, and they're bit, mm -hmm. bitterly aware of that, mm -hmm. uh, if you lose your job in that place, uh, you need to find another master uh, somewhere else. On the, uh, on, 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 on the market be hired, uh, if possible, in the same uh, uh, condition with an equivalent uh, uh, salary. If you don't find it, you starve. Uh, of course, there's today the social security, blah, blah, but uh, well, it's shrink, shrink it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, uh, the, the, the master has two faces and the domination has these two faces, one which is direct, uh, coercive and uh, institutional, and the other, <laughs> which is structural. 
and in 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 in, 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 in invisible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Um, so let me just uh, say three more quick things and open it up and let me see. And I'll be looking for who wants to jump in first. OK. Um, so one one is kind of like at the end of the day, I think there there's um, there's some convergence towards um, towards a an understanding of the dual nature of the enterprise. One is to understand how cooperatives are transformative, but also to recognize some of the, ne the ways in which they are caught in certain um, logics, uh, remain caught in certain logics. And I think that we, the, there's a recognition that there's this dual dimension to it. But to, and, and the question in a way that I'm posing is what to, what to emphasize from a motiv motivational perspective in order to move, to move forward. One question in there though still remains, which is what is the, what is the critique? Is it simply, and at some point you mentioned being the fact that you remain embedded in markets, is that the critique that you remain embedded in markets? It's, um, it's part of the critique, part, except that I suspect that the market is uh, is is intruding into the uh, uh, and, and into the single uh, uh, labor processes uh, more and more. Right, um, and then and but then the question also becomes: if that is the critique, what how how can we how can we imagine moving directly to? Uh, forms of social organization that are non-market, right? So then that creates the problem of kind of like the motivational or the movement or the or the development. And, or is the critique something more about it demobilizes workers sometimes? It demobilizes workers from the struggle in a way. Uh, not to uh, enter into the question of mobilizing and demobilizing workers because uh, perhaps I'm wrong, but... Uh, uh, I do not believe that mobilizing workers uh, uh, relies uh, on the finding of the of the good theory, you know, which uh, mm. which uh, mm. Mm. which uh, proposes. I agree with right. you on that. I mean, uh, right. the, which gives the good plan for, right. for the succession right. of events. Although in contemporary discourse, I have the sense that the critique is something about demobilizing workers or turning them into, I mean, this idea of turning them into petty bourgeois, you know, who don't, who don't want to contest the system anymore. Um, but so that would be yeah, one so question. Yeah, a conversation about what we call the system. Right, right. And then what I have to confess to you is that I, uh, as I, uh, the more I, I read your book and I find it enormously interesting, the less I, uh, in fact, uh, uh, really understand what you have in mind when you accept, when you explain that uh, cooperation or cooperativism, I, I like the, the term, would allow not only to invent uh, new forms of uh, consumption, production, uh, life, in fact, uh, labor, etc., uh, on the local uh, uh, level, mm -hmm. but also to uh, invent a kind of uh, global uh, uh, fabric or structure of the society. I can see that you are very much a Proudhonian, and I'm not against that. Don't believe, believe that. Because in a sense, what you seem to suggest is that cooperation at a, a, a higher level becomes something like federation. And federation is a very interesting idea. So uh, the world as a federation of uh, uh, cooperatives. Mm -hmm. uh, this seems to me to be what you more or less have in mind. I don't know how we get there, I have mm -hmm. to tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how we mm -hmm. get there. Mm -hmm. But I uh, don't reject the uh, uh, the uh, 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 idea. 
especially because I believe that the notion of federation has other uh, extremely uh, uh, important dimensions in today's uh, politics and uh, world. Mm -hmm. Not far from the question of wars, uh, et cetera, et cetera, because it's uh, at the same time, in a sense, in one of its meaning, it's an alternative both to empires and imperialisms and uh, uh, nations and 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 nationalism right? and that's very i think very uh important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, okay yeah. Okay, well, how do we get there? Yeah, well, I mean, I think there's different dimensions there. One of them is at an economic dimension, purely, perhaps notions of federalism. But then there's another dimension at the social level, which would be the ways in which um, being embedded in these cooperatives of, throughout our life, in every aspect of our life, from consumption uh, to production, et cetera, um, could be transformative in thinking about the way we as a society think about our relationship to others and transforming what is or what could be called the punitive society into something like a like paradigm that. of cooperation. Yeah. Um, the, the only two other things I did want to mention, I mean, we didn't bring the Commune de Paris in, um, but that would be an interesting a uh, historical case study also to discuss in terms of the um, the use of uh, workshops, etc. Um, and then the final thing I did want to say was about this ruthlessness, this ruthless, the ruthless critique, the ruthless criticism of all that exists. And um, and in part, what I'm trying to suggest in that in that piece is when we engage with the duality of trying to figure out. Um, what is beneficial, how cooperatives transform behavior versus um, what, how they continue certain logics, right? Um, without giving them time to exist and to see how they transform in a way um, where our, our, our critique is almost too ruthless because it's not giving enough room to, to, the, to the praxis side, to the opportunity to see what the transformation would be before kind of criticizing it. And, and in a way, um, that's something I do feel about, often about contemporary critical theory is that we often get so taken away by the ruthlessness of our critique and of the next, of the next thing that we are in a way immobilized. Um, and it, it goes back to actually, I didn't include this in the post, but this uh, Jack Balkan's idea um, of, um, of um, the crystalline structure of, uh, he, he wrote an article called the crystalline structure of legal thought, but this idea that there is a crystalline structure to the critiques such that they will replicate, they, we will hear them again. The, the critique that we make of capitalism today will be will have a crystalline structure in such in the way that it will also provide for a critique of the cooperative right um but of course if it's constant crystalline structures we're never going to get to the we're never going to get to that next stage to have the opportunity to actually see how it has transformed us in a way leap was the moment an opportunity it got crushed by Giscard d'Estaing's administration and 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 the decision to use it as an example, but of course it was a laboratory to see how those forms of cooperation could transform people and and others as well. That's yeah, that. yeah. But you know, this is I, I'm afraid nobody will have time to uh, say what they think. But uh, this is why why ideally I wanted uh, and I propose to have another starting point for the discussion that would not be Marx, but Elinor Ostrom. Oh, right. And we had the Ostrom yeah, reading. Well, we don't yeah. have time for that. But uh, the reason was that uh, in, your, in your book, you devote a very uh, interesting, you have a, uh, an incredible gift, not to say genius, to, to pick up the uh, core ideas of certain contemporary uh, uh, developments and subject them to, to, to discussion. 
And so you pick up uh, Dardo and Laval and uh, Hart and Negri's uh, uh, reflections on the common. But I regret that we do not uh, uh, trace back this problematic to, 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 to Ostrom's uh, contributions and what she launched, uh, put on the table. Because I think that uh, Ostrom is neither a Proudhonian nor a, a Marxist, that's clear. So she uh, doesn't question, in fact, the uh, institution of private property. Mm -hmm. All the examples that she, uh, of course, she, she bases her work, and that's historically extremely interesting and important. I know another article which uh, gives a full account of that, but I couldn't retrieve it. Uh, the background to, to, to Ostrom's uh, uh, book is not only uh, a theoretical and politically loaded discussion with neoliberal liberal theorists. Hardin, of course, was... Uh, perfect ex example of them, and therefore a critique of the uh, uh, idea that uh, the only rational way of using resources, especially scarce uh, 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 resources, is to eliminate state intervention and uh, 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 cooperative uh, forms and to uh, 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 bring in the uh, self-interest of uh, private uh, producers. She bases her work on a huge and very and fascinating long discussion that took place in the US and elsewhere in Africa and Asia about the question of development. And so therefore what to do with uh, uh, and how to support in a sense uh, uh, Senegalese fishermen, uh, 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 Brazilian uh, uh, or Indonesian rather uh, uh, forest uh, uh, workers uh, and so on and so on. They all of course have different forms of property which are not reducible to a single model. But I tend to believe that, uh, uh, nevertheless, she believes that the important uh, 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 question is the one that arises when you have private owners of uh, cows, uh, boats, uh, fishing boats, uh, uh, cotton fields, uh, the California Valley, uh, and so on and so on. And they cannot survive over the long term, especially transmitting to the next generation their own uh, uh, capacities of production, if they don't reach uh, through a kind of democratic procedures, a procedure, mm -hmm. contractual, but essentially a, a deliberation, uh, coming together the, and, uh, and, uh, and establishment of rules, uh, a, 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 a system precisely <coughs> of limitations, uh, agreed limitations on the use of their common uh, uh, resource. Mm -hmm. And what seems to be the case is that uh, this kind of uh, uh, institutional uh, project is more than ever uh, uh, important and interesting in the context of contemporary environmental uh, catastrophe or uh, et cetera. But again, like in Marx, if you like, uh, the two sides, uh, of the coin which uh, do not fit very well together. All these examples also rely on the idea that uh, there's a community. Uh, it's either a pre-existing community or it's a community that will emerge through the cooperative uh, uh, process uh, itself. And this is of course a local community. And the fact that it's a local community is a condition, once again, I'm fascinated by, uh, by this expression, is a, is a condition for the members of the, of the community to come together. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's almost like the Greek agora. Right? There's no place where they come together and discuss, exchange uh, uh, considerations of uh, interest, uh, uh, 
um, way of life, uh, uh, economic and and and, uh, and 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 family objectives, there will be no uh, uh, institutional uh, uh, solution. Uh, now all the problems of the uh, of the uh, uh, or many of the problems uh, raised by the environmental catastrophe are taking place at uh, another scale. Uh, so, and of course we know, <laughs> I have friends who say to me, look, you need to encounter the uh, uh, Amazonian uh, chieftains uh, who know uh, their forest and uh, built an alliance uh, uh, with them. Uh, this will be the basis. Uh, if, the, if the Western or Northern <coughs> consumer or worker meets the Amazonian uh, 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 autochthonous people, they will find a solution of this. <laughs> but I'm sorry, where and, and when do they meet? Uh, and uh, which common language do they have? I don't say this is absolutely impossible, but, uh, but it's highly uh, problematic. Yes. Um, we, I think we'll get in three short questions and then maybe we'll wrap up um, or short interventions. You want to start, Parker? Well, I'm so sorry, I'm terrible. Uh, as you say, French. Um, so first, I mean, obviously, thanks for this. This has been a pretty awesome talk. Um, one of the things that has been of interest to me since reading cooperation is its relationship to Marx and what Marx was like the praxis of Marx, which I understand as revolutionary, a call for revolution. And so I'm curious, one, when we talk about cooperism and like these new cooperation based ideas, are you essentially following in that tradition and with a new tactic? Am I what? Um, I was, I'm asking if. Um, Cooperism and cooperation, as Professor Harcourt like conceptualizes it, is it simply a new tactic in like the long line of Marxist revolutionary ideas, or is it a completely new direction, obviously inspired by, but a new direction in on in on its own? Um, and then I'm also just curious on a general your general thoughts on the praxis of. Uh, Professor Harcourt in his call for cooperation in cooperation in the praxis of Marx in his calls for revolution, like what salient comparisons you have and differences you see like in the immediacy, if that makes sense. Great. Yes. Um, good, good, good. Thanks. Uh, Abigail. Yeah, I'll um, shorten my question. So, um, Professor Harcourt, you said in the blog post that Cope Co power. Me, I don't want to force you to 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 take off your your mask, but uh, you must speak okay. loud and slow. My ears are extremely bad. Sure. Um. So, Professor Harcourt, you said in your blog post that co power is a uh, like a narrow specific form of Marx's cooperation. Um. And it seemed like we were speaking today about how, for Marx, it was like capital was this binding force that brought like. The, the elementary form of cooperation into the modern, like much more powerful, productive form of, of cooperation. Um, but that what that does to the workers is that it sort of alienates them and it kind of, what I understood was that it maintains this cooperation power, but the workers aren't actually cooperating because they're all sort of, you know, like order to do things and like in their own little like limb of the capitalist, like, um, system. Um, and my question then for Professor Harcourt was, do you think that cooperatives, um, as you describe them in your book, like, is the binding force for that still like this capital? Or is the binding force more like sort of a transformation in human psychology? Um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess, would it be like a different binding force that that creates 
creates these um, cooperatives rather than capital? And then how does that like transform with, um, I guess, like, because it seems like for most of these cooperatives, they're, people aren't actually working in the same physical space. They're working like in digital spaces. Um, and does it matter that people aren't like physically working together, that they're all just kind of like, yeah, spread across the... And then yeah, and can you hear me well? Yes, Perfect. thanks. Um, I appreciate a lot about the discussion of the two separate oppressors and who might they might be between the factory and the sim and the system itself. Um, it made me think about like one of my favorite books is the Grape of Grapes of Wrath, and that's a big theme in that. Um, and I was wondering to ask a little bit about because we I think we. The conversation danced around this a little bit, but didn't fully talk about it. Whether cooperation is in and of itself should be an end result or should transition to a new system. And if, even if you think it should transition to a new system, or even in this analysis, particularly to Etienne, do you think that um, it, can, it can transition away from being market-based as cooperation grows um, in the future? Okay, um, so here's what I propose, Etienne. Uh, why don't I say a few things and then you can have the final word? Okay, and um, because, okay, uh, well, no, I mean, actually, I think this conversation is going to have to continue. Uh, because there's a lot to say that there's a lot more to say than I can say in the in the uh, we're already a few minutes over time. So, um, you know, one of the things that I did in the book was to leave open the question of uh, how a society of cooperation, how cooperism, what cooperism leads to. Um, and in a way, I, I specifically left it open because it's just not clear uh, what, where, what, what it would be like to experience uh, those forms of cooperism across all of our lives and at a social dimension in addition to the political and the economic um and that it is just it's just hard to know at, at if we lived in a society that was a was based on a paradigm of cooperation you know what we would think would need to come next and how and how the structures that would emerge would allow for uh, different structures ultimately uh, to be uh, to follow Right. And so um, I, I in, in that sense, I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to place cooperism in a long line of Marxist or other thought or anarchist thought necessarily. Although I, I again, I did use the expression of kind of this being bottom up, um, which I now realize actually maybe that was wrong and and as i was proposing in 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 one of the posts so this has been a really extraordinary uh productive exchange with Etienne over over a couple of weeks and rereading his piece and thinking about it again but as i was rethinking about this idea of bottom up all of a sudden i was like well wait a minute why bottom up and not why not why not bottom down um uh so so I would say it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't uh, motivated to be within a uh, in a successive line, um, but actually to emerge in a way organically from the predicament that we find ourselves in today, the predicament of total interdependence in the face of the various crises, especially global climate change, a predicament of interdependence that is so, I would argue novel, new, and extreme, that it calls for forms of interdependence uh, at a level of cooperation. Um, so, so that, and Abigail, um, your question about what is the binding force, um, I, I do believe that the binding force is something about the experience of um, self-governance, equal self-governance that we aspire to often in the only in the political dimension and not in the dimension of our workplace, 
not in the dimension of our residences, et cetera. And so it's something about that um, transformative potential of feeling that one is participating in a form of self-determining self-governance on equal footing with others uh, that I think is a binding force here more so than structures or something like that. Um, and then finally alone, uh, this question of whether it uh, transitions to a completely new system, right? Um, I would say, I would say it, in, a, in a way it would be radically transformative to experience those forms of cooperation, solidaristic cooperation, I'd say in this context, but forms of cooperation, forms of cooperative existence. Uh, um, I, I, I think it would feel like a coherent whole um, that would, um, and, and, and that's what I propose at the social theory level, uh, a coherent whole that could possibly transform entirely our society towards a paradigm of cooperation in every aspect of our relations, right? Um, okay, now, so in a way, I'm dodging the question of the relationship to Marxism, I think, uh, because I'm almost, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not confident that it's necessary uh, to the theory of cooperism, that there's, a, that there's an inherent necessity to the theory of cooperism associated with our time and um, less with, uh, with well-established theoretical traditions. Etienne, you're going to have the last word now, actually, uh, at least for the, for the evening. Yeah. Um, so you're going to close us out. Um, referring to your question, and in fact, I believe they all communicate in some, in some sense. Why to, to, to be uh, uh, fixed, I would say, and, uh, and in a sense, uh, um, uh, imprisoned or enclosed in the, in the question whether uh, cooperative, or perhaps more generally, I would be inclined to go in that direction, solidaristic. Uh, forms of uh, action, life, struggle, whose uh, who's, who's principle, whose logic, whose driving forces are clearly antagonistic to the dominating uh, 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 structures of our contemporary society. So how to, to why focus on the, on the idea that they um, um, represent a transition towards this or that? Why not simply uh, admit, uh, accept that they are facts in the current, uh, uh, state of, of, of affairs. Of course, uh, uh, if, there is a, if there is a bifurcation, if there is a, a choice, if there is a, an antagonism, because very few of these forms of solidarism are not uh, uh, exposed to some forms of uh, repression or, uh, or uh, of destruction. So, so of course, there, there's a question of what, which principles are, are prevailing, you know? mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and which are on the, uh, on the I'm sorry, on, on, on the rise, mm -hmm. and, and, and which are uh, uh, 
on the losing side, so to speak. So that's a political uh, uh, problem. In mm -hmm. And it's it's vital, it's crucial, and it has many forms in today's world. So I completely agree that the issues that we are discussing are not ideal, and they are uh, omnipresent, uh, and that they, they emerge either from within uh, uh, experiences in the reorganization of labor or the uh, um, uh, and the forms of resistance to to the destruction of the environment or the uh, uh, or the or the forms of solidarity of migrants and, and and refugees and so on and so on it forms a multiplicity a kind of a constellation uh, of solidaristic uh, uh, forces and 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 movements and actions, which taken together uh, represent the hope that many of us have to not uh, remain uh, both forever in in, in in the same uh, the same shit as mm. Marx once wrote. <laughs> <laughs> The famous line. And then, then, and I stop there. And then, uh, um, it's. Then I have two problems. The one is, despite some precautions that we take, and this is reflected in the, some of the questions we heard. You seem to believe that cooperation is the name for the principle of the resolution of. Uh, of human uh, uh, misery uh, uh, at a global level. Uh, so as a consequence, when you describe, uh, when you say, uh, when we will get to that point, mm -hmm. uh, when we will get to that point, uh, and people no longer destroy each other, they cooperate precisely. Uh, so Marx had a word for that, huh? which perhaps is uh, perhaps there is a, a slight uh, uh, displacement in the terminology. We we the misunderstanding comes from the fact that if you look for a word in Marx that more or less corresponds, coincides with what you uh, describe, it's association. Mm. Uh, it's association, the free association of equal uh, 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 humans, uh, an ideal that uh, he inherited and transmitted to 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 others. Uh. Now forgive me, but uh, um, I, I can see uh, why association is a, is, a, is, a, is a strong and, and forceful idea. Uh. But the, you you yourself call it uh, you ask the question, do we need a, a, a utopia? I, I tend to believe that we need utopias, but the idea of the of the society in which all the the, the violence, the pains, the exploitation, etc., is uh, is uh, is over. Uh, that's just a dream. That's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's paradise. Well, that's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so call it association, or call it communism, or call it cooperativism, et cetera, what does it change? Yeah. Now, the strong uh, uh, point, I believe, in, uh, in nevertheless, in your, in your argument is uh, that you draw from Foucault and your creative use of uh, Foucault, uh, is uh, to substitute, in a sense, the question of the punitive society for the question of uh, the modes of exploitation, as the key issue to be uh, 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 resolved. And I would, <laughs> it's not just power, it's a certain form of uh, 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 power. And I would very much agree with you that the question of punishment or the punitive society and all the logic, <laughs> sorry, that goes with it, is not something that is limited to certain aspects of our uh, 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 the society in which we live. It's everywhere. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I do agree with you on that completely, uh, which relativizes certainly uh, uh, the Marxist point of view. Not that Marx would completely ignore that. There are very few things that he ignored in this respect. And uh, but precisely, he tended to 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 localize that uh, as a as a as a partial uh, uh, program, uh, which uh, uh, and interestingly, Foucault. Um, was very interested at some point in the passages of uh, of Capital, where Marx describes the uh, uh, capitalist as autocrat and the punitive logic of the organization of labor within the uh, uh, the, the factory. The reference that is <coughs> given <coughs> in the standard editions of Foucault is wrong. They put a footnote saying Foucault is referring to Capital Volume Two. This is absurd. Uh, it's uh, it was uh, referring to the Volume Two of the French edition that he was using, which is part of uh, Volume One in the broad sense. So, in a sense, you for Marx, exploitation is the arch dominating category. And the question of the punitive society is a, is, a, is a partial, even if important aspect. And you seem to suggest that we might uh, uh, completely invert this, uh, etc. But we remain, nevertheless, and I start there. Huh? Uh, this is slightly bizarre in your in your in your book, uh, with the question: uh, What happens with capital? Uh, is it something that in in the in the meantime, we'll we'll have uh, uh, with that a way. How do we? How does the cooperative uh, the do the cooperative uh, 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 develop in a world where uh, the uh, arch uh, the powers that dominate our lives are uh, states. Uh, imperial st- imperialist states and uh, and and big corporations mm-hmm. so do they become cooperatives i mean by by which uh, miracle mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah the capital becomes cooperative membership yeah so yeah. we decide yeah. that uh, at no point, people have to do it no people have to do it no, uh, uh, people have to do it. Uh, the 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 humans. Uh, 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 no, I'm sorry, I'm yes. teasing you. But I, the humans, uh, uh, you know, remember the famous beginning of uh, Hobbes's and Rousseau's uh, description of the social co- contract. Huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, they join and decide. Let's create a a common. Uh, uh, political uh, organization of which we are all members and to which we subject all our, all our wills, etc. So similarly, at some point, humankind virtually gathers, uh, perhaps on the, on, the, on the web, on the internet, and they, uh, uh, the spirit visits them simultaneously, you know, and they say, oh, Let's abolish capital and replace it with uh, cooperatives. You know? At this point, uh, the old guys, Marx, Lenin, and 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 others would would have a point. It seems to me. I mean, they 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 would ask which forces, which uh, which programs, which uh, which political actions uh, uh, lead to that result. They don't believe in the visitation of the spirit. Mm. Yeah. No. Neither do I. Um, uh, but the, uh, and so this is the last thing I'll say, cause I know we're definitely over. Um, but this does call for a bit of a response. I think, um, the, the, the idea is that the only real way in which we can productively intervene right now is through the formation of various forms of cooperatives in terms of food cooperatives or in terms of so, working yeah, cooperatives. I- forms of solidarity right so the idea is not that everybody at once would need to kind of go through some you know social contract at all but that each individual actually is empowered right now to engage in forms of solidarity and cooperation 
um, that would ultimately push in that direction. And that actually that's the only thing that we can do now because at the time that I wrote the book, I was somewhat down on electoral politics, but if you've seen what's going on in our House of Representatives, I don't think that there's much else that can be done. So, but we'll, um, let's, let's, let's stop there. Um, I think maybe uh, I'll, I, where, where I end is again with Beckett, you must go on, I can't go on, I'll go on. Thank you, Etienne Bonibar, for an extraordinary class.